Welcome to a deep dive that, well, takes us right to the heart of it. You know, what makes us, us. Yeah. We're tackling that age old question, nature versus nurture. You've sent us some research. Yes. And uh, it looks like we're going deep into the Minnesota study of twins reared apart. We are. Ooh, I'm ready to be surprised. Well, this study is fascinating because it challenges, you know, so much of what we think we know about personality. Right. And what shapes us, really. Okay, so let's start with the basics for those of us who haven't, you know, spent our lives studying this. Sure. Remind us, what makes the Minnesota Twins study so special? So imagine identical twins separated at birth, raised in entirely different environments. Right. That's the core of this study. By comparing these twins to identical twins, of course, raised together, right. researchers could begin to isolate the influences of genetics. To like a giant real-life experiment. Exactly. With human beings. And they didn't hold back. We're talking extensive Pretty. personality testing, IQ assessments, yeah. even detailed inventories of their belongings. They wanted to paint a complete picture. Okay, I have to ask, why the inventory of belongings? What were they hoping to find there? That's where things get really interesting. Okay. Um, they were looking at whether things we might consider to be uh, influenced by environment. Like? Like preferences and tastes. Okay. Might actually have a genetic component. You're saying our genes could influence whether we're drawn to modern art or, you know, antique maps. It might be a bit more nuanced than that, but essentially, yes. Wow. They were exploring that possibility. I am ready to have my mind blown wide open today. I think it might happen. So tell me, what did they find? Did these separated twins end up living parallel lives? That's what makes this study so compelling, right? Mm. The similarities they found were striking. And I'm not just talking about looks. Yeah. We're talking personality traits, intelligence levels, even career choices that were eerily similar. Give me an example. Okay. What's one finding that really drives this home? One of the most famous examples from the study involves a pair of twins, both named Jim. Both named Jim. Aside from both being named Jim, both were nail biters. Oh, wow. Enjoyed carpentry. Oh, wait. And both chose to vacation at the same small beach town in Florida. Okay, that's a little eerie. It makes you wonder how much is actually predetermined. I mean, that's more than a coincidence, right? Right, exactly. The study suggested that genes play a much larger role than we previously thought, particularly in something like IQ, where they found about 70% of the variation could be linked back to genes. 70%? Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is, even if you give identical twins totally different upbringings, their genes are still a major driving force in who they become. That's what this research suggests. Wow. But of course, it's never as simple as just nature or nurture. It's how those two forces interact that really shapes us. All right, so let's unpack that interaction. Right. If genes are 70%, does that mean environment only makes up the other 30%? Not quite. It's more nuanced than a simple percentage breakdown. Think of it this way. Think of genes as providing the raw materials, okay. the building blocks of who we are. Like. Environment is kind of like the architect that shapes those materials, right? Deciding which potentials are realized and which ones remain dormant. Okay, that's a helpful image. Yeah. So even if someone has a genetic predisposition for something, whether it's musical talent or a knack for languages, without the right environment, those talents might never be fully expressed. Precisely. It's this, you know, intricate dance between nature and nurture. Right. And it suggests that our environment doesn't just shape who we are, but it can actually influence how our genes express themselves. So then where does that leave all the criticism about twin studies? I know some researchers have questioned the methods and the conclusions drawn from them. Yeah, you're right. There's always healthy skepticism in science, which is how it should be. Right. Um, one of the criticisms leveled at the Minnesota Twin Study is that it's difficult to completely rule out the influence of, well, how people treat identical twins, even when they're raised separately. So you're saying there's an inherent bias because identical twins are treated as more alike, which could, in turn, make them behave more alike. It's a valid concern. Some argue the study might not fully account for that dynamic. Okay. There's also the question of generalizability. Okay. The study's sample size, especially those twins raised apart, was relatively small. Critics point out that it might not be accurate to extrapolate these findings to the entire population. It's a good reminder that correlation doesn't equal causation. Just because two things occur together, in this case, genetic similarity and certain traits, doesn't mean one caused the other. That's the core of scientific inquiry. 
The Minnesota Twin Study, despite the criticisms, you know, really made people rethink the nature versus nurture debate. Right. It pushed the conversation forward and forced a deeper look at how we understand human development. It is fascinating and more than a little humbling. We like to think we're fully in control of our destinies, but this research suggests it might be more complicated than that. And this complexity extends beyond personality and IQ. This research opened doors to study other aspects of our lives potentially influenced by genetics, like longevity, relationships, and even things like predisposition to certain health conditions. Hold on. Are you telling me there might be a genetic component to how long we live? There's growing evidence suggesting a link, but it's not as simple as like a single longevity gene. Right. Researchers are finding connections between our genes and a wide array of life factors we might not expect. Okay, now that is both incredible and just a little bit unnerving. It makes you wonder how much is really written in our DNA. Right. It really throws a wrench into the idea of a completely blank slate, doesn't it? It does. But it also raises questions about how we use this information. Does knowing about these genetic predispositions change how we approach things like education or parenting? That's a great question. If our genes have this much of an impact, where does that leave things like personal responsibility, free will? It's a lot to unpack. It certainly is. And it's something we need to grapple with as we learn more about ourselves. This deep dive is really making me rethink some things. But we've focused mainly on twins. What about those of us who aren't part of a matched set? Do these findings have any relevance for us? Absolutely. While the study focuses on twins, its findings have significant implications for understanding, you know, human nature as a whole. Right. It suggests our personalities, our quirks, even our vulnerabilities might be more deeply rooted in our biology than we previously thought. So instead of resisting our nature, maybe it's about understanding and working with it, recognizing our predispositions so we can make choices that align with who we are. Now you're getting to the heart of it. Understanding the complex interplay of nature and nurture allows us to approach personal growth and development with greater insight and perhaps a bit more compassion for ourselves. Instead of fighting against our inherent selves, we can embrace the hand we've been dealt and find ways to play it well. Precisely. It adds a new dimension to the idea of self-discovery and acceptance. This conversation has been incredibly eye-opening. But before we wrap up, I want to circle back to something you mentioned earlier. You alluded to the ethical considerations surrounding this kind of research. Could you elaborate on that a bit? What are some of the ethical questions this research raises? That's an important point to address. Anytime we delve into the realm of genetics and its influence on our lives, you know, we inevitably bump up against complex ethical considerations. Like what, for example? What are some of the concerns people have raised? Well, one concern is the potential for misinterpreting or misusing this type of genetic information. It's easy to imagine how this kind of information could be, yeah, misinterpreted, even weaponized. Exactly. Um, for example, some worry that, you know, this type of research could be used to justify discriminatory practices. Right. Fueling prejudices based on genetics. It's, you know, it's a slippery slope and a reminder that scientific advancements, while exciting, should always be approached with careful consideration for their potential impact on, you know, individuals and society as a whole. We can't ignore the ethical implications of discoveries like these. Absolutely. Just because we can explore something doesn't always mean we should. Right. At least not without, you know, careful consideration of the potential consequences. It sounds like this research, while fascinating, comes with a heavy dose of responsibility. It does. It challenges us to think critically about how we use this knowledge and to ensure it's used ethically and responsibly uh, for the betterment of, you know, individuals and society as a whole. I think that's a great place to leave this conversation. Sure. This deep dive has been, well, eye-opening to say the least. I've certainly learned a lot. It's amazing to think how much our understanding of human nature has evolved, you know, just through studying twins. Right. It highlights the power of scientific inquiry to challenge our assumptions and deepen our understanding of who we are. And maybe even more importantly, it encourages us to ask bigger questions about, you know, what shapes us, what makes us unique, and what it means to be human in all our messy, complicated glory. Well said. We can embrace the mystery while still marveling at what we uncover along the way. A huge thank you to you, expert speaker, for guiding us through this, well, this complex and fascinating topic with such clarity and insight. And to you, our listeners, we'd love to hear your thoughts. What resonated with you in this episode? Did it spark any of you questions or insights about your own journey of self-discovery? Head over to our website or find us on social media to share your thoughts and continue the conversation.
Until next time, keep those brains buzzing and remember you are a unique tapestry of nature and nurture. And that, my friends, is something truly extraordinary.